mine is not the strength of one, but the strength of many. Behold the breath of life. E tō taku tini taku tō e hara te tō taku tai ati e wa mauri ora. In the Māori system of belief, our ancestors are always with us. And so I acknowledge you as being the latest in your line of lineage, your whakapapa. And I greet your ancestors as they surround you with love, comfort and support. To guide you in this te ao marama the physical will. When I was growing up in the Hokianga, in the Māori system of belief, our ancestors are always with us. And again, I acknowledge you for being who you are and what you stand for. I like to think I'm pretty strong in my cultural identity as a New Zealander. My kiwitanga, both as a Māori through my dad, and from whom I inherited what my Swedish wife calls my café au lait complexion, <laughs> and as a New Zealand-born European, a Pākehā, through my mum, and from her I inherited what she calls my proud Roman nose. But it wasn't always this way for me. I remember growing up in 1970s New Zealand and sitting my school C in the fifth form, and I had to choose my subjects. And I had a choice between woodwork and Māori. I wanted to do Māori, but everyone that I spoke to at the time said, waste of time learning Māori out. That Māori world has gone. We live in a Pākehā world now, a non-Māori world. You need to learn a skill that you can get yourself a job in. And so I chose woodwork. The ironic part about that is, these days, if you're fluent in the real, the Māori language, you'll never be unemployed. So I was 27 years old before I could speak a word of Māori, and as I did, I felt a foot taller, as if my shoulders were pulled back, and my heart opened and grew with so much more love to give. When I look back at this stage of my life, I call it the opening of the green stone door, Te Tato Pono, and I'll forever be grateful for that door whānau. However, not long after I opened that door, I closed it again. I met a girl, I fell in love, I moved here to Tauranga, and then I was blessed with one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I became a dad. And so I put my Māori learning to the side, and I went back to what I knew and worked as a commercial fisherman to provide for my family. Unfortunately, that relationship failed. And what I learned is that when you experience hardship in life, you have to be able to sit with that pain and certainly not try and block it out like I do. <coughs> when you're an absent father and your heart's broken in two, you have to allow yourself to feel that full range of raw, and man, I mean raw, human emotion, so that you can heal, grow, and be strong again in the future. So I went down some pretty dark places for a while there, Farno. And one of the keys to my recovery was every night I'd go down to the beach, I'd look up at the stars and I'd say, Tupuna, ancestors, please give me the strength to be clean tomorrow. And they did. And they also sent me to this place here, Makoya Island, which is in the middle of Lake Rotoru. And at Makoya Island, they had these week-long Taiaha training camps. The Taiha is a traditional Māori fighting weapon. And at Makoya Island, they don't so much teach you how to fight, but they teach you focus and discipline through the training. And so as I trained and I sweated, and as I sweated and I trained, I found a brotherhood and I found inner peace. And I also learned to do things like this. Tu 
मांग लो When I returned from Macquarie Island, my wife Anne said to me, something's happened to you. You have changed. You're different. I guess you could say, I found myself on that island farm. These days I work as a cultural trainer, and I got into that through my work as a funeral and marriage celebrant, where my point of difference has been able to include Māori culture into the ceremonies of the people that I work with. And I remember when I was going through my accreditation process, the last stage of which was a face-to-face -face interview with an official here in Tauranga. And as we sat and chatted, eventually she said to me, All right then, Alice, what's your point of difference? Why should we give you your licence? And I said, well, if you're the average Kiwi couple and you want to have some kind of Māori cultural input into your ceremony, there's nowhere really to go for that unless you go down the whole marae experience, which not that many people are comfortable with doing. So she kind of looked me up and down, and then said to me, and this is the moment I'll never forget, she said, all right then, Alice, we'll give you your licence, but I don't think you'll be very busy. And I was just kind of like, oh, yes, sweet as. I was just happy to get my licence, you know. But that was seven years ago. And the last wedding that I officiated at was my 95th wedding. And in every single one of those weddings, the couple has wanted something in te reo in their ceremony. Now, here's the real kicker on that. Probably only about a quarter of those couples have been Māori. I worked a lot with expat Kiwis, and for them it's really important to them to bring their partners home here to Aotearoa and through marriage to commit to each other for life here. I've also worked with a lot of immigrants, and for them, well, primarily the rest of the world sees New Zealand for two reasons. One is our clean green image, and two is those things Māori that are the face of New Zealand internationally. So for immigrants, when they move here, they feel they need to acknowledge Te Ao Māori, the Māori world. So by including Māori culture into their ceremony, this allows them to do that. They then feel free to put down their roots and become Kiwis themselves. Now when I saw this, I was stoked. Because it wasn't really that long ago that the general consensus amongst non-Māori New Zealanders was kind of like, well that Māori stuff is cool, but I'm not Māori so it doesn't belong to me. So I think it's awesome that all New Zealanders are using Te Ao Māori to display their uniqueness, our Kiwi Pung. And I honestly believe we've arrived at a really cool period in the development of our nation, a time of unity and respect. I call this the evolution of our nation. However, I looked at that and I thought, well, what do those people really know about those Māori concepts that they're claiming? For example, what is so special about greenstone? What do those tattoos on your arms and on your legs and occasionally your face mean? What do you mean there's more than one type of haka? Now I have to bring this up, whānau. Where we as Māori get a bit miffed is where we feel we're takahi ananga meokato Māori. Things that are important to us as Māori are trampled on. And in my experience, 99.9% .9 of the time it happens through lack of knowledge and understanding. People just don't know. So, through knowledge and understanding, I empower people to go to those Māori occasions strong in the knowledge that they know the protocols and the processes in place. Quite simply, they know what's going on. This frees them, and I mean frees them, to enjoy something that is truly beautiful and unique about Aotearoa New Zealand, our wonderful Māori culture. The first question I ask when I have a training is what are the cornerstones of health and well-being for you? And the answers always come back, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy spirit. And then I speak of the Māori academic Sumatian Drury who said, for Māori to have true health and well-being, we need a fourth cornerstone, whānau, family, or community, and he called this the top of farm model. Now I fully understand where Mr. Jury is coming from. I've worked a lot with Māori youth in the past, and I'd often see true leadership potential in those boys. 
but they'd rather run with the brothers and get led down a path that they know is not really that great for them than step out on their own and feel they're going to be alienated. Not realising, of course, that once they step out, there's a whole other group of leaders waiting to surround them there. So I always say to those boys, be a leader, not a follower. And so while I fully understand where Mr. Jury's coming from, I actually dispute that type of farm model farm there. Because I believe all of us, as people, have a sense of ora tinana, physical health, ora wairua, spiritual health, ora hiningaro, mental health, and ora whānau, family or community health. And today is a classic example of that. Because you are all here in this room to be inspired by the stories of others that are making the world a better place. You are feeding your sense of order farming, of family, of community. So whether you're Māori or not, don't think of this Māori framework as being separate to yourself, but rather, the beautiful thing about Te Ao Māori is it's such a great framework to encompass and display all of those characteristics that we have within us as people. And you all, by being New Zealanders and by living in this beautiful country of ours, are in the unique and privileged position of having access to and the right to use that framework. So I want you to do karakia, our prayers. I want you to sing waiata, our songs. I want you to proudly stand and deliver your pepeha, which is how you introduce yourself using a Māori format. So for me, Whiria is my mountain, Tahunuki is my hill, Hokianga Hakapo Karakia is my river, Ga Toki Mata Paurua is my canoe, Ga Puhi is my tribe, Ga Te Farara is my sub tribe, Ko Te Whakaronga Tai me Te Kaiwaha, Aramarai of my community. But, and it is a big but, Fano, if you're going to use this Māori framework to display who you are and what you stand for, and like I just said, I really want you to do that. Then you have to honour that. You have to walk your talk. For example, if you're going to start going around saying, Ranganui is my sky father, Papa Tuanuku is my earth mother, then that means it's not okay for you to drop litter on the ground. It's not okay for you to pour effluent into our pristine waterways. And it's not okay for you to release pollutants into our air. Because why would you desecrate on your mother and your father? I want to ask you a question. As a New Zealander, how proud do you feel when you see the All Blacks do the haka? <coughs> Or how loved do you feel when somebody gifts you or you give somebody a beautiful piece of pono? Or how do you feel when you're standing on a piece of land here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, that makes you feel all-powerful? Or perhaps a true inner peace? Just as I do when I'm standing on my tūranga waiwai, my place to stand, up in the hokiang. And how would you feel if that was all to be taken away from you. Because we live in a multicultural society here in New Zealand, Whānau, and we're getting more multicultural by the day. And as our cultural diversity increases, are we, as a nation, going to be strong enough to put a stake in the ground and say, this is how we do things here, with transparency, and honesty. This is how we treat people here, with trust and respect. And this is how we love, protect and nurture our environment here. Because be very aware, if you don't claim your kiwi pung through your thoughts and your actions, then somebody else will claim that kiwi punga for you. And it may not necessarily look and be 
<coughs> pardon me, how you want it to be. Do you want that? So I ask you, what have you done to celebrate your cultural identity as a New Zealander yesterday? What are you doing to acknowledge your Kiwi Tonga today? And what will you do to claim your Kiwi Tonga tomorrow? And I implore you, when you're making those decisions around what your Kiwi Tonga is for you, think not just of yourself, but of your children and your children's children, the future generations of New Zealanders to come. Because what you do today regarding your Kiwi Tonga will directly impact on their Kiwi Tonga in the future. And finally, Farno, I actually challenge you to step up. Don't be passive in your Kiwi Tonga, because in your hands lies the power to shape our society and our nation. Use that power. Because why can't we be this cool little country down the bottom of the world that isn't afraid to do things our own way? How? It's simple. Your Kiwi tongue. Live it. Breathe it. Be it. <coughs> Pe tō tāku tini tāku tō e hara te tō tāku te i a ti e wa mauri ora. Today, mine is not the strength of myself standing alone in front of you on this stage. But today, mine is the strength of all of you in this room. And it feels awesome. Behold the breath of life. Thank you.